Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor. I'm a science fiction, political, and philosophy nerd, a Marine Corps and law enforcement veteran, and we will be reviewing Old Bailey in the Hammer and Bolter series uh, for shenanigans. It's going to be a very fun. So, if you're into it, let's go. Proper boys with fighting the likes of Gibbet here. Ow! Proper orcs have proper enemies. You need to get big and strong. Orcs get big and strong by beating the best, not by fighting grots, even if you is gonna eat them. Enemies like what, boss? <sighs> <Ooh. laughs> uh, like Beakies! <laughs> well, yeah, Beakies is well hard. But I ain't talking about beaky tin boys. Oh, oh, uh, uh, pointies, then. They is weak, but they is fast and well stabby. But I ain't talking about them, either. You want a proper enemy. Like what the prophet himself has got. Listen here, youths. We runters have all the stories. I'm gonna tell you about Gazcorn. I'm gonna tell you about old Bailey. <laughs> I always, I always come into these things like half cocked, but that's that's part of the joy of the series. And let me, ah, oh man, all right, let let me get through my points first. So. We do see the desecrated Space Marine head. Just in case we thought that it was going to be a cheery episode, we see the mechs, fi the mechs fixing the the ships, and then all of, we see the squigs like eating carry on. So what I'm inferring from this is that the orcs have won. They've won the battle. They've desecrated the Space Marines. They're cre you know they're they're basically maintaining their equipment for the next battle. They're getting their stuff together, and the they're bored is what what I'm inferring from what I'm seeing. And we see a comedic tone with these orcs trying to get the grot. And there are there, there is an orc hierarchy, right? So these are boys or youths, as they keep being referred to, but they will be boys in the coming months, where they're growing into their, their strongest form, where they will be footline soldiers. But orcs attack in waves. They love crumping. You know, they love fighting. They like shooting. They love yelling. It's great. They're a feral species of substandard intelligence, but they're brutal and cunning enough to survive in the forty the fortieth millennium. So, the <laughs> the longer you live, the bigger you get as an orc. You're basically spawned from mushroom spores. That's uh, how orcs come into existence. Is a few spores get onto a planet. They use sunlight and biological life in order to gestate. They become an orc, and then from that orc, you know, the the fungus can spread. 
And basically, bi biological or natural environments are very difficult to completely rid orcs of once a planet has been exposed, but it can be done. Uh, primarily by killing all of the orcs and burning every single biological thing that exists on the planet. And uh, that's pretty much the only way to really do it. And also, if biology comes back too fast, be aware that you might have an orc problem down the road. But proper orcs have proper enemies. And the reason why is crumping is how you get big. And by crumping, I mean fighting. So, beakies. Beakies is uh, orc slang for space marines. That's because when orcs were first encountering um, encountering space marines, I think they did encounter space marines prior, but they did bump into them when they were wearing, I want to say, the Mark VI Horus Heresy armor. And that is known as the beaky armor, because basically rather than having the flat Darth Vader air filter that we're used to seeing they actually had a cone on the end of the apparatus and uh so i think it's called like corvus armor i think it might be mark six corvus but that you know because the first orcs bumped into beakies because they had the the beak uh corvus armor they continued to refer to them as beakies generations later unironically because the first orcs met them and came up with that term for them despite modern space marines having no, like, like Corvus armor being one of the rarer battle armor types that you find unless you're fighting Raven Guard. So pretty, pretty silly little orc lore right there. And then, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about different kinds of enemies. They're well, you know, the beakies are well armed, but the pointies are weak and are weak, but fast and stabby. So they're talking about Eldar. Obviously, it doesn't matter if they're Drukhari, doesn't matter if they're Eldari or Azurani or, or uh, what, what's the. Uh... So Azurani. Drukhari, Yanari, yeah, the, the Death Ones, and then uh, the Harlequins. So so basically, all of the Eldar, different kinds of Eldar, they all fit that description, right? And then Runt Herds. Originally, I was thinking because of that uh, little, like, neck shackle thing that they, you know, they would have been the herds of animals, and I wouldn't be surprised about that, especially with the new works coming out that are uh, animal-based. But... I also wouldn't be surprised if runt was a reference to uh, basically you. So maybe this is a runt herd, meaning that he's responsible for the raising and indoctrination of the young orcs, which is why he didn't kill them, which is what I think everybody expected from watching this. But if you don't develop the next generation of orc, then you're not going to have any orcs, right? And if they suck at crumping, then what are you going to do, right? So Grotz, obviously being the, the virgin, uh, virgin, the version of Gretchen or gremlins or yeah, uh, you know, ba basically that's what they are in this universe is uh, the, the smaller, smaller creatures, but just related, but a underclass to the works. That's all I got for now. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, that's right. Daylight. The meanest orc killer of them all. That's him, dead. Are hey, you me? me? No, no, no. Not just a human. Yarrick, old feline. The greatest foe of the great castle Magpuro Cracker. The beast of Armageddon. The Conqueror of Piscina, Golgotha, and lots of other places besides. The Great Rock, the Big Three, the Gothiest Goth, the Stabbiest Stabber, the Fightiest, Hardiest Warlord, what was ever been ever, and that is a very long time. And don't you forget it. Only if you become a Warlord like him can you get an enemy as good as old Baylor. He's got an eye that'll burn a hole in you. A claw that'll rip you in half. Though he's a skinny runt, he carries a gun. Why, he's so big and so heavy, only beakies have him. Why, I reckon you couldn't carry it between you. But he waves it around like an itty bitty squig. And he rides a battle wagon so big and so shooty, an hundred flash kids couldn't take it down. <laughs> Hang on, that comes later. You see, even without all that, he's well fierce.
the old lot before Yarrick stops him. So he sends in one of his best and baddest war bosses to sort the old man right out. Ugglehard was the biggest, toughest, meanest snake bite in all the whole. Bring him all now! <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Sebastian Yark, a normal human. Of course, orcs don't hold normal humans in high regard because they killed them by the the loads. Gazgul Uruk Thraka, the biggest orc that ever worked. Proud, proud son of Gork and Mork. So, uh, orcs assemble into walks, walks. W A G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G H H H H H H H H. I don't want to alarm my neighbors, but a wah. And as they assemble into wahs, it seems like they become more intelligent. In Gazgul Urukthraka, the chosen of Gork and Mork, the twin twin gods, the brutal but cunning and the cunning but brutal gods of the orcs. Uh, he was able to unify more orcs than ever and send them to the Battle of Armageddon. This was actually in like 2008, I want to say. 2007, 2008, the Battle of Armageddon played out. And one of the coolest things, I actually kind of wish that they did this. So Games Workshop, listen to me. Listen to me right now. I think, th so I was reading the battle reports from the release of Gazgul Uruk Thraka and the um and the this campaign while I was in the Marine Corps. And I was reading simultaneously battle reports from a tournament, and I was reading the lore around Gazgul Uruk Thraka taking the, the field of Armageddon. And what I noticed was it seemed like the orc forces were fighting different imperial factions, and different imperial factions were fighting different orcs in different locations. And what I hallucinated at the time which I do think would be an excellent business model in order to gain investment from your people, is fight the campaigns narratively and have the outcomes of your games create the new narrative going forward. Take Dungeons & Dragons' shared narrative and create it on a company-wide scale. Now, maybe this isn't the most profitable thing to kill off your favorite heroes just because they lost in a narrative campaign. But I think you would get a lot more emotional buy-in from your base if literally Games Workshop selected like Winter's SEO, Tabletop Tactics, all the guys who were really big on the wargaming side, gave them all of the heroes and then fought a narrative campaign in which the outcomes of the battles literally affected the next steps of the universe. 
I think that would be a huge and very cool way to invest in the community. But anyways, that's enough about my nerd crap. Let's get back into the rant. So my son, despite being only four, was able to pronounce Gazgul Uruk Thraka at three. <laughs> Along with mama, dada, banana, uh, hungry, all that, all that stuff that came out when he was like, you know, b between one and three, Gazgul Uruk Thraka was amongst those words. <laughs> so Sebastian Yark has a digital weapon, meaning that he has a close proximity laser that can uh, deal mortal wounds. I don't know if that's on his data sheet, but that's what I'm taking from the eye. Then uh, the power claw, which he did. Uh, we, we did just see him take that in single combat against the orc. A storm bolter, which is a bolter uh, strapped side by side. They do make human sized storm bolters, but I think that just by looking like a storm bolter, they, uh, Sebastian Yarrick has impressed the orcs because he wields it one handed. I hope that the tech priests invested in a human sized storm bolter. That way, this dude isn't constantly breaking his arm. Then uh, the battle is for Armageddon. And we see a lot of really cool stuff. You know, we see shot cannons and sneaky boys and killer cans and burner boys and tarantula defense weapons and the Armageddon Steel Legion and the Bane Blade tanks, which is Sebastian Yarrick's uh, particular battle wagon. And all of this stuff is very cool, but we want to see it in action. A Bane Blade is supposed to be a tank that's capable of taking on a Titan. How cool would it be to see a well-animated battle in which a Bane Blade liquefies a killer can with a direct hit? That would be sick to see. So instead of just seeing like a PowerPoint presentation with all of these cool assets, how about we actually see the assets interact and do terrible shit to each other? Because that's what I'm here for. I wasn't here for a PowerPoint presentation that happened to be about cool stuff that I like. But you know, say la vie. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is that orcs like they use, or excuse me, they use teeth as currency. So, you know, if you kill your enemies, you steal their teeth, uh, particularly like orc enemies. You know, the, the main boss orc that uh, Sebastian Yurik 1v1, he was carrying a bunch of teeth on his chest. So that's him showing that he's rich in orc culture. He ditches his gun for melee because melee is more gorky and morky. And uh, the Imperial Guard, uh, you know, Sebastian basically uses his bull pistol to take down an orc because, let's face it, there's no honor for a human trying to survive a one-on-one -on -one duel with an orc, okay? They're stronger and they're faster. They're dumber, but they're stronger and faster. But Yark takes his head, takes his power claw for his own, and as a result, later on, mounts it to his body in order to make him more terrifying to orcs so he can continue to fight them. Super awesome. Sebastian Yark is one of my favorite characters. Now... That being said, I started breaking down the Hell's Reach series, but the reception was lukewarm, probably because algorithmically it's a very old series. If you're a new person or if you're an old person and you want to see me break down this, you know, Hell's Reach series, you need to stick around when the, the Hammer and Bolter is done. You need to stick around when the Interrogator is done. You need to stick around when we're done with like uh, Emperor Text to Speech. You got to support the other projects too if you want me to do them. So, anyways, let's keep it moving. Valor is so tough that he takes Ugglehard's claw as his own. You mean big boys fixed it up good. Then Valor hears Orcs is scared of him and that they is saying he can kill with a single look. So he gets a shooty I put in and all. Again and again, Gaskell comes to take away the Huey Hunt. But Yarrick beats them back every time. Then some pinky kick shows up and spoils all the fun! And that was that. Old Gaskell has enough, so he goes away. But Baylai won't give up. No, not him. So he chases the Prophet across the sky. To a place the Yumi's call Golgotha. There, Baylai thinks he has Gaskell cool. Only that ain't it, cause Gaskell is as cunning as he is brutal. 
It's a trap! You ain't so tough after all. It's you. <laughs> Chuck him in with the rest of the Yumi's. <laughs> Destroy it. Destroy everything you can. Dead then? Dead? Dead? Oh, Bailey? Nah. It takes a lot more than a cunning ambush, a good whipping, a battle, and a big explosion to kill him off. Oh no, he lived all right. <laughs> you, you me? The boss wants to see you. <laughs> so we see the the steel legion you know take on the orcs throw them back the bane blade takes out some uh some drag jump stompa whatever or right, listen i'll build an orc army for my son and i'll read more lore and i'll i'll, I'll get more orcs okay I'll, I'll understand the orc culture soon enough okay but uh, you know, the Beakies come in and spoil all the fun. A bunch of blood angels land and start killing the crap out of orcs, as they love to do. And so as a result, Gazgul Uruk Thraka has to withdraw. Sebastian Yarrick pursues him, but it ends up being a trap because orcs don't just like being brutal. They like being cunning as well. So, uh, you know, we, we saw everything that happened where Sebastian... Sorry, my house is no longer air-conditioned. I live in Florida. It's in the summer. I am paying a steep price right now. I am sweating. But I wanted to bring you this beautiful lore, so I hope you appreciate it as my brain slowly turns to mush in front of you. But if you're ever uh, cornered by a bunch of orcs, or if you're ever cornered in general and you have firearms and the other people have firearms, don't, uh, don't waste your time screaming because you're just giving away your position when you could be shooting. Shoot. Your friends will know that you're in trouble. Okay? And maybe you'll take a few bad guys down with you as well. 
So destroys part of the space Hulk. Uh, space Hulk. He's willing to die in order to uh, screw over the orcs, and as a result, Gazgul Uruk Thraka gives him some level of reverence and love and chiv- chivalric respect, similar to you know, dare I say it, the General Saladin and Richard the Lionheart during the Crusades. And we're missing that in our modern world. Okay, we're missing hating your enemy but respecting him at the same time. I think we could learn a lo- I think we could learn a thing or two from uh Gosgul Uruk Thraka and uh you know and Sebastian Yarrick. <laughs> but put him on an Aquila lander. Good enemies is hard to find. Pretty cool. I do love it. Let's keep it moving. And he takes it right back with some big cannon thing. And then we take it back. We all thought that was that. The years go by, and old Baylai becomes even older, Baylai. Meanwhile, Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka chases his dream of the big war across the stars, following the voices in the Great Green. Gorg and Mork, the gods, they tell him what to do. And all the time, his power grows and grows until one day he comes back. Gazgul has a few new tricks. He teleports a bunch of boys onto the planet. And he drops massive rocks onto the surface, so we orcs can have some forts. They was impregnable, impregnable, unbeatable. But not to old Baylai. want to get big and be proper orcs with our proper enemy, you have to go and pick on something a bit meaner than little gibbet here. Why should we listen to you? You is old and stumpy with that leg. <laughs> yeah, that leg. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you's got no proper enemies like that. <laughs> you want to make an enemy out of me? <laughs> so not. I'll let you into a secret. Old Baylai is my enemy too. How'd you think I got this here? <laughs> Oh, shit. 
shouting and shooting. It's I blazing. I fought him. And I lived. So don't you ever tell me I ain't got no proper enemies. He fought old Bailey. He fought old Bailey. That's right. Thanks, boss. You're all right, Gibby, for a grot. But if you ever let anyone eat you, I'll kill you myself. Where, where, where is he now? What? Oh, Bailey. Where is he? What? Him? In the big black, right now, looking for Gaskell. And when he finds him, oh, when he finds him, what a scrap that is gonna be. Noise. So, some human beings can undergo gene enhancement and extend their lifespans. I believe Sebastian Yark is one of those uh, folks because basically I think at this point he's like 150 years old or so. And while he's not as genetically enhanced as a space brain, you know, he can still be kept relatively virile despite his advanced age and a threat because, let's face it, you don't need to be that skilled in order to use uh, ballistic weaponry. But uh, God School is waiting to create the Great Wall, and it can be hard. One of the cool things about this is I have gone home mentally, physically, emotionally. I am done with violence as much as I can be for the rest of my life. If, uh, if I encounter a violent scenario, I will deal with it as appropriate, but I'm not actively seeking it anymore. And I was seeking it at a younger age. So I think it's interesting to see an old man who has given up violence for a time because his enemy spared him and he already did more than enough in the service of the Emperor and he's already a great hero of the Imperium of Man, but then to become enraged by, you know, your own history and to seek battle once more. Now, I understand that Gosgul probably attacked first, but at the same time, it is pretty cool that he returns the form. And we see a lot of cool assets again. We see Ratlings, the halfling hobbit-like snipers of the Imperial Guard. We see Tempestus Scions. We see Rocket Boys. We see so many very cool things that I wish we could see in more detail actually doing what they do. I talked earlier about wouldn't it be cool to see a Bane Blade destroy a killer can? Yeah, it would be. But I would like it to be done in more than five frames per second. I don't even know if that's five frames per second. It might be like two frames per second. Good God, please invest and animate in your show. Good God, Games Workshop, we pay you thousands, if not millions of dollars. Please, for the love of God, invest back in your community. And also consider the narrative idea that I pitched out earlier. I think that thing would be so sweet in order to get buy-in from the community. But orc massive firepower versus human massive firepower, cool. Seeing scions go up against them, cool. Rocket boys, cool. Halflings, cool. Orcs are naturally combative, so they bicker even after hearing all of this cool lore. And that wraps up the show. Well, what I would say is, um, I still love it. It's fun. It's actually more fun on the third watching. This was the first Hammer and Bolter episode that got released along with uh, Death's Hand, I want to say. And it was a disappointment. Because we were, I was expecting, there are plenty of animes out there uh, with good action. And they animate their action, and you can see the detail, and you can see the fights, and all that kind of stuff. And I was hoping, you can even find my reaction to the Hammer and Bolter sizzle reel, the Warhammer 40k sizzle reel. And I was saying that I thought that Warhammer 40k could lend itself to an anime-style uh, cartoon, 
because I've seen so many anime style cartoons in which action was done really, 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 really well, where you could see all the details, you could enjoy the violence, you could have fun, and it doesn't cost as much as 3D animation, and it doesn't cost as much as live action. So I thought this was going to be the perfect blend, and then seeing basically a slideshow with things that I find really cool, while it is entertaining, and I do enjoy it on a third or fourth viewing, and I do like all the little details that I'm noticing on a third or fourth viewing, it's not what I want. I want the action. I want... I want wide shots with assets looking like they would be moving in a similar way to real life, duking it out, killing the crap out of each other in intelligent and visceral and emotionally gripping ways. That's what I want. That's what fans want. Games Workshop, give it to us or else you're a bunch of punks. Anyways, so... My name is Connor. I'm a Marine Corps and law enforcement veteran, science fiction, political, and philosophy nerd. If you did enjoy this, there are plenty of other animations on the channel. Dozens, maybe. Maybe, maybe, ha maybe, half, a do maybe half a hundred at this point. So there's plenty of Warhammer stuff in the Warhammer playlist. There's plenty of things to check out in the Warhammer playlist. Then also, if you're just a fan of violence in general, go ahead and check out End of Watch, Full Metal Jacket, Fury. I've broken down all those films. If you're into politics, I identify as centrist center right. I like debating people from the far right and from the far left and check out the politics channel. It's pretty fun. That's pretty much it. I appreciate you. Catch you in the next one. Bye.